past few months have seen the endangered greater glider, southern greater glider, and the horrific impact that native forest logging is having on this species in the spotlight. I'm Anna, a communications officer at Nature Conservation Council New South Wales, and I am joined today by David Lindenmeyer, a world leading expert on forest conservation, uh, ranked among Australia's top 50 scientists based at the Australian National University, and he has led some of the largest scale environmental research programs in Australia for over four decades. He's the author of 49 books on forests, including The Great Forest, and he has a new book out soon called The Forest Wars. Hi, David. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Anna. It's a pleasure to be here. So The Greater Glider, in your words, is an iconic marsupial, but they don't seem to have the profile of other species like koalas, uh, although they look just as adorable. For those who may not know much about greater gliders, could you give a brief introduction? Yeah, the greater glider really is an Australian iconic animal. It's the world's largest gliding marsupial. It's about 1.3 kilos in size, and it comes in a whole range of colours from jet black with a white understory, underbelly, right through to pure white, again with a white underbelly. So there's a whole range of colours. The animal, unlike the koala, is almost completely silent in the forest, but like the koala, it only eats eucalypt leaves and only certain kinds of eucalypts. So the species is very strongly related to, in its distribution and, and abundance to the productivity of the forest, but also, very importantly, it's very very sensitive to different kinds of disturbances. It's temperature sensitive, so it responds very badly to changes in climate. It's logging sensitive, doesn't like having its nest trees cut down. It doesn't like changes to the microclimate of the forest when the forest is cut. It's sensitive to land clearing. It's sensitive to fire. And because of all those sensitivities, logging, fire, climate change, land clearing, it's actually a really good sentinel species to tell us about the conditions in the local environment. Uh, why is it so important to protect this species from logging? I think it's really important to protect greater gliders from logging because we know that this species can resist some of some disturbances, but once it's gone, it seems to be very, very difficult to recover it. So when we badly damage habitats through land clearing and through logging, including thinning, the conditions are no longer suitable for greater gliders, and it may take centuries for the species to actually recolonize these badly disturbed areas. So it's absolutely critical to maintain areas of suitable habitat and not log those areas, not only because it takes a long time for the species to recover, but elsewhere in its distribution, populations have been declining very, very rapidly. In fact, we've seen some regional extinctions of this animal in more recent times. So it's endangered for a reason, and that's because it's it's declining very quickly and it's very sensitive to disturbance. So we need to make sure that we keep important areas for this animal intact, given all the other stresses that populations are in. Could you outline some of the ways that logging threatens greater gliders? So logging threatens greater gliders in several ways. The first is that logging removes some of the large old trees that these animals are dependent upon. These animals spend the entire daytime period and some of the nighttime period as well inside their hollows in large old trees. These trees tend to be very, very old. So it takes a long time to replace those trees when logging cuts them down. Logging changes the microclimate of a forest. It makes it drier, windier and hotter. And these are very difficult additional conditions for animals that are te temperature sensitive, like the greater glider. Logging makes forests more fire prone, that is prone to higher severity fire. And fire is not good for greater gliders, not only at a site level, but also across the landscape. And so logging changes forests in ways which removes habitat, changes the microclimate and increases the risk of fire, which are all major threats to greater gliders. Yeah, speaking of fires, uh, the Black Summer bushfires had a huge impact on greater glider numbers. Could you speak to that? Yeah, so we saw that areas that had been logged in the uh, 2000, areas that had been logged and then burnt in the 2019-2020 fires, always burnt at higher severity than places that were intact. 
In fact, the differences are so substantial that a logged forest burning under moderate fire weather still burnt at higher severity than an intact forest burning under extreme conditions. And this occurred not only in Victoria, but also in southern New South Wales and northern New South Wales. So there are very significant negative impacts of logging on fire severity. Now, we know that we've lost greater gliders throughout large parts of their distribution in northeastern Victoria. And we know that past fires have had major effects on greater gliders, for example, in the central highlands of Victoria following the 2009 uh, Black Saturday fires. So there are undoubtedly major impacts on greater gliders right throughout its distribution in New South Wales as a cons consequence of not only logging, but then fire that's followed that logging. And then in some cases, you have a double whammy of post-fire salvage logging, which is incredibly detrimental to the environment. So you've really seen some major impacts on, on gliders right across its distribution. When I was uh, significantly younger than I am now, I'm disguised as a much older man now, but in my early 20s, when I first started doing field surveys, we would see greater gliders as the most common animal when we were doing spotlight surveys. And, and the animal's reasonably detectable because it's got such bright white eye shine. And we would see greater gliders in, uh, in extensive parts of the forests of southeast New South Wales, northeastern Victoria, the central highlands of Victoria. Now, in just the last 40 years, we've seen huge declines in populations. Central Highlands of Victoria have seen an 80% decline. The greater glider is, is now rare or absent from large parts of northeastern Victoria and large parts of southeastern New South Wales. It's gone regionally extinct at Bordereau National Park, for example. So it's now a very, very uncommon animal. So we used to have a common species, the common species became uncommon, then the uncommon species became rare, and if we're not careful, that rare species is going to go extinct. And hence the reason why the federal government has actually recognised this and uplisted the species now to be endangered. This is up from being of least concern not so long ago. Yeah, so it's a dire situation. Uh, could you talk a little bit of about the background of what's been happening recently with uh, the regulation of forestry and greater gliders, uh, forest surveys, and uh, the EPA regulation. So when a forest is logged, you're supposed to do a proper pre-logging survey to work out if there are endangered species or species of cons conservation concern in a particular area. And then you're supposed to identify particular habitat trees and leave those so that they're not logged. What's happened is that New South Wales Forest Corporation has done surveys, quote unquote, for greater gliders, but during the day, greater gliders are nocturnal. So you're not going to see many greater gliders during the day if they're stuck away in their, in their tree hollows. That, so this is a major issue, obviously. You've got to survey at the right time and regularly to detect a, an endangered species. Second thing is that, yes, under the EPA's rulings, there are now more habitat trees that are going to be preserved. That's wonderful. But the fact of the mere action of logging a forest changes the forest in ways which are highly detrimental to greater gliders. The bottom line is, is that they should not be logging forests at all with an endangered species. It's completely nuts. Uh, you don't mess with a species habitat, particularly when it's in such serious decline. So to me, it's ridiculous to even think that we should be even contemplating logging in the endangered species area. Why do we even have endangered species legislation? Why do we even have an EPA if this is a kind of pseudo regulation that we're going to get? Yeah, and uh, the changes also uh, only mandate that a very small proportion of the forest will be surveyed uh, at night, uh, leaving some 95% of the forest unsurveyed. Uh, so I'm interested to hear from you what an ideal survey or a survey for gliders would look like. So an ideal survey for the southern greater glider would first entail doing mapping analysis to look at the species distribution of, of the greater glider. And you can map areas of high conservation value for the species based on species distribution models, based on habitat requirements, based on forest type mapping, all of those kinds of things that have available data for them in New South Wales. 
And that's your first, that's the first sieve that you, you look at. Where are those areas of high conservation value forest, the greater glider? Do not log them for a start. The second phase of this is where there are potentially remaining areas that might be available for logging, do proper surveys. Go out and survey the area repeatedly at night. Go out during the day and record the locations of hollow bearing trees. So you need to do both daytime surveys and nighttime surveys, but they should be seeded by proper mapping analysis and interrogation of appropriate data sets. I'm still not convinced that New South Wales should be doing native forest logging at all. The industry costs the state a fortune. It, it uh, employs very few people. The industry is in terminal decline. Almost all of the timber cut from native forest goes into the wood chip and paper pulp stream, which is a high volume, low value product that has enormous environmental damage. Moreover, when we log forests, we make them more flammable. We make them more flammable for up to 70 years. And under circumstances where we have high flammability forests uh, that are leading to an additional fire burden in the forest, I don't think that we can afford to have that happen. The reality is, is that New South Wales should be out of native forest logging. That will save the taxpayer a mozza, and it will save many of our endangered species if we don't keep knocking down their habitat. That about sums it up. Thanks, David. Uh, you've got a new book out soon. Do you want to give it a plug? Yeah, so we have a new book coming out in the middle of March. It's called The Forest Wars, and it's a very grumpy, irritable male syndrome book. And it outlines a whole series of myths that have been peddled by the industry over the last 40 years. There's no effect of logging on biodiversity. We have to log forests to save them. We have to log forests to make them safe so that we don't have too much fire. We can thin forests and it'll, and it'll solve the problems. Frankly, I'm sick of hearing this bullshit that I've had to to, to deal with for the last 40 years. And so I decided as part of my therapy that I needed to, to sit down and write what the myth is and what the reality is counter to that myth. And so that's the forest wars and it sets out everything you should know about why we need to stop native forest logging, not only in South Wales, but elsewhere in Australia. Great, thanks so much for joining us today, David. Thanks, Anna.